Have you ever wondered what's actually above us? What's in our sky? I mean, when's the last time you actually looked at the sky? I'll tell you what, it doesn't look like the sky that I once knew. Things have changed now. Or maybe, just maybe, it's always been that way and we just weren't awake enough to see it. But what I can tell you, in fact, that what we're looking at, those things we call stars, the one thing that shines brightly that we call our moon, I don't think that they're anywhere near close to what they've been telling us they are. In fact, if you look real close and zoom in just right, you might see some really very unexpected things that will shock you to your very core, rock your world, and make you wonder if it's leap year. Better yet, as if you just leaped out of your own year and into the future. It's that insane. Young minds are structured by the influences that surround them. And if you think about this, we have been literally influenced from day one, and not necessarily by our parents, but by those that are in control. You know, the moon to me looks like it has lots of lights, cities so bright that shine, roads, avenues, cul-de-sacs, and probably more people farms just like we have here. Well, here's a funny little story that will probably either tickle you or if you're me, make you completely angry when you realize how bad, big, and bold the lies that are in your face have been told. When the moon has seemingly become more like the home of the Jetsons, spacecrafts flying in and out, zipping here and there, stars that as you zoom in appear as if they have been chopped in half, or creatures that appear to hug them, holding on tight snuffing out their light. I mean, who knows really what they are, but I can tell you this much, they're everywhere. When I was a little girl, my biggest, greatest joy was laying on my back and looking at the stars, looking at the sky that my God made. Now I feel like I'm a stranger in another world on another planet, and I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. And it's hard, it's hard to digest. When you think about these things and when you realize that the only true things that we even have to go by are what another man has told us. For we've never been to the sky, to outer space where we could fly. We haven't taken a rocket to the moon and we don't even know if the moon is in fact the moon. What we do know though is that we're seeing things that do not correspond with what we've been told and taught in our social conditioning classes. Once again, that's what they are. All my life, I've been told that this right here, in this video, right now, is Venus. That's not Venus. My understanding was Venus was a planet. This, my friends, has wings, structured somewhat in the fashion of a satellite However, and oddly enough, as you can see, there is some type or sort of anomaly, and I would call it a living creature, given its actions and features. The satellite theory still stands, for you can see on each side a row of lights, but what I find hard and mind-boggling to understand is that the lights on the sides to each of the planet itself, or so they say, are inconsistent. They do not have a rhyme nor reason and often shift and change places. Can somebody explain that one to me? Because I'd like to know and I'm longing to understand. When it comes to expressing the things that I often see in the sky that surround me and that seemingly follow me, even though it seems impossible, I struggle. I struggle in depth with every bit of me trying to convey just what it is that I really do see and I know that many of you do as well. This is not coincidental. 
that we all are singing the same song and seeing the same things. It's not, for there's just far too many accounts. And this has been ongoing for years. People have tried, they've yelled, they've screamed at the top of their lungs. Do you see what I see? Yet nobody listens. Well, today I'm here to tell you, I do. I see what you see. And I don't know if the reasoning upon why we see what we do or experience the things that we have been, or if it were deployed and based upon our own awakenings, but it is seemingly so. Like the moment we become aware and awake is the moment that we see them. And the moment that we see them, they see us back. When we suddenly find us with the ability to observe them, they then observe us back, bringing new understanding to observational energies, and all the while struggling with the optical perception. I believe that our awareness manifests the true reality of all things, both living and dead, both present and past. I believe these things are often accomplished by what we choose to observe, or possibly just by being still, simply being still and letting truth abound. After all, we're living in a world based off of vibrational frequencies. So your life experience will always be based upon things that you choose to surround yourself with, or the company that you choose to keep, things that you put out into the world, because the things that you put out into the world are the things that you get back. That is your yin and your yang, and indeed, that is your as above and so below. And all things considered, I believe, has everything to do with our consciousness, our spirit beings, who we are, who we live for, what we do, and how we conduct ourselves as human beings, what mannerisms we use, what kind of behavior, and how we influence others. All these things matter, and I think that they have every impact when it comes to our awakening and understanding. What I have taken away from all of this, all of these experiences, is that maybe, just maybe, we were not supposed to see these things until our own timing was right, until it was allowed by our Creator, for when He believed our souls to be ready, gave a new meaning to the words sung in Amazing Grace, because indeed it is, and how sweet is its sound for saving a wretch like me, and also newfound understanding for what it was like to be blind and now see. Sometimes I believe we do have to find that valley, that low, dark, and deep valley where rock bottom lives in order to stand, to get our grounding, and climb our way back up and see the world in a whole new light. Maybe this entire time we were living for the world when we should have been letting the world live within us by letting its lights shine so brightly for all the world to see for others to grasp onto igniting a fire within within all of us so that we can be seen in our own truth by standing and basking in its light instead of filling ourselves with all the world's lies that live under our beds that creep out at night there's an exquisite beauty to the human soul that I think so many have forgotten about and some have never known. What if we were to show them, to guide them, to hold their hands along the way so that the journey doesn't seem so lonely and so that they don't go astray? What if? I do believe for sure that some of our worlds are filled with a series of unfortunate events. So many bad things happening around us, near us, by us, or upon us. And it leaves us lost, scrambling, trying to figure it all out, looking for answers, trying to stand up when the world's holding us down, stepping on our head, and breathing up every last breath of air so that they can live and thrive, and us, ourselves, just not survive. But this is not the case, my friends, for we have choice, we have free will, and most of all, we have faith. For our creator, the creator of all, 
He's got us this far, and we have not gone at it alone. There's no way that we have arrived to the point in life that we have if it were not for him, given the very breath of life that is within us, and also taking it away when the time is right and he's ready for us. We're simply here, awaiting the day when we will be on high, just like the moon and the stars above, being the connection of truth and light by filling the universe with abounding love. Sometimes I look at the stars and I think of them as lost souls set apart from the rest of the world and the other stars, leaping and jumping in abounding light, yelling and screaming, I'm here, can't you see me? Why don't you listen? Why am I not heard? They're all alone in their own part of the universe, their own corner of it all. And then I'm reminded that I feel here on earth exactly like that star, which compels me outside when I look up at night to say just this to that little star. I see you, I feel you, I know you, for you shine the light in my way. For you're the beautiful light that guides me so that I don't go astray. And I always know exactly where I am, whom I belong to, and who truly loves me. And it doesn't take the other stars to surround me to make me know this or tell me so. For my truth has always lived within, and I have always belonged to him. And I need not another soul to tell me so, ever. And this, my friends, I do know. For now, I'll just sit back and I'll wait. For I knew my beginning. I experienced the moment I became awake. I realize my acceptance and I embrace what lays ahead. For we cannot fail. And they cannot lie to us anymore, because for once, we now know who we are, and we're not lost. We've been found, and we are oh so powerful. Don't ever forget that, my friends. What are you doing? Huh?